Welcome back everyone. Got two fun new partner commanders out of 2020 that we're going to take a look at and do a little deck building guide for. So yeah, let's just get into it. First up, we've got Brawlin Sky Shark Rider. Is four mana for a 3-3, partners with Shabra's the Sky Shark, and it says, whenever you discard a card, put a plus one plus one counter on Brawlin, and it deals one damage to each opponent, and you can pay a red to give target Shark Trample until end of turn. And then, we've got Shabra's the Sky Shark, five mana and partners with Brawlin, has flying, and it says whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on Shabra's, and you gain one life, and you can pay white blue hybrid to give a human flying until end of turn. So between the two of these cards, there's a lot of really cool abilities. A lot of different directions that you can build in with these two cards, and we're going to talk about some of them today. First I'll talk about some of the things that I like. I really like the one damage to each opponent ability on Brawlin. That's shown up on a number of cards in the past, and the ability to damage all of your opponents at the same time without having to attack is pretty good. To be able to put pressure on your opponents even if you can't safely attack them keeps them from being at high life totals late into the game, and keeps them at a point where someone else might be able to alpha strike them if they become a problem. So I really do like that direct damage to each opponent ability, and that's something that I'm going to aim to build around, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. And then we've got Shabra's, which talks about drawing cards and gaining life, which I think is going to be pretty good, because even just incidental life gain, if you gain 5 or 10 life over the game, that's enough to keep you out of alpha strike range of a lot of different decks. Kind of erase the damage if you're using a lot of fetch lands and shock lands, ancient tombs, stuff like that. Uh, just keeping yourself around 40 does make it much harder for opponents to try and kill you. So a lot of really cool abilities between the two of them. And then you can give a target shark trample, give a target human flying. The human flying, because there's actually quite a few humans in the game, uh, could be relevant with some things. Odric Lunark Marshall, for example, is a human, so that's kind of cool. But really, I think the main build around is going to be the draw and discard effects. And when I think draw and discard effects, I think of one thing. Wheels. I think you're going to want to be using a lot of wheels with these two commanders. Regardless of the direction that you want to take the deck in, I think wheels are just going to be really, really good. You probably discard three or four cards most of the time, so you get three or four damage to your opponents. You're probably going to gain a bunch of life, however many you draw off the wheel effects. And you're going to make your creatures huge in the process, which I also like. Because again, even just pumping your commanders a little bit now opens up the possibility of just getting there with combat damage should everything else fail if you're trying to execute some combo or another. So just a lot of good things in there. We've got direct damage, card draw, life gain, the ability to pump themselves, uh, the ability to give trample and flying, that's evasion, uh, split across two bodies. So partners are just notoriously strong because you have two creatures and it means that you can run a lot less creatures in your deck if you want to. So I really like these cards and I think they're going to be pretty powerful. And so now let's talk about build options and let's talk about what I think the most powerful build of these two commanders will be. I think it's going to be the Curiosity Combo. Curiosity Combo, been around for a long time, very, very powerful, it's CEDH viable, and with these commanders, I think there is an opportunity for them to be CEDH playable uh, with the Curiosity Combo. So the way it works is, you put Curiosity on Brawlin, go to your end step, and make sure you have eight cards in hand, and then you'll start a loop where every time you discard a card, you'll do one damage to your opponents, and then you'll draw a card as a result of that which will start a repeatable loop and should kill your opponents. So this is a combo that we've seen before in many other decks, uh, most commonly with Niv-Mizzet. Putting Curiosity on any of the Niv-Mizzets will cause that same combo to trigger, and so for that reason, I think you'll want to be running some or all of the Niv-Mizzets. Niv-Mizzet Perun, probably the strongest of the bunch, but also the hardest to cast. So something you'll need to think about there. On the left side, you see Firebrand Archer, Gutter Snipe, and Electrostatic Field. Those don't go infinite, but putting a Curiosity on those in a spell-based deck will draw you a lot of cards. And it's something that I've seen to be very effective. So if we're going this Curiosity route, I think those are cards that we'll want to run as well. So yeah, I think the strongest build is going to be put Curiosity on Brawlin, get eight cards in hand, and then just go to your end step, watch your opponents die. Now, there's a few mechanical things that we need to talk about also. Uh, it's important to note that Tandem Lookout is not a May, which means that you can't stop the loop, which can be a little bit of a problem. So you'll want to do one of two things. Either you'll want to not run Tandem Lookout because it is a little bit risky if an opponent has more life than you have cards in library. And what'll happen is you'll just go into a loop where you draw your entire deck out and then you lose to decking yourself. There's a few ways to handle this, but the easiest is just to run a Shuffle Eldrazi, but note that the Shuffle Eldrazi does not work with Tandem Lookout. Or, you'll want to run away to break the combo. Uh, a Sack Outlet will do it, 
or if you have some additional mana or one of these cards already in play, you can get a Labman, Jace Wielder of Mysteries, or flash in a Thassa's Oracle if you need to. And that'll prevent you from decking yourself, and you'll win the game as a result instead. So uh, be very careful with the Tandem Lookout. You may want to run one of these as a backup thing, if that's what you're planning to do. Now, that does bring me to another infinite combo that we should talk about, and that's Drog Skull Reaver with Shabraz. Whenever you gain life, you draw a card, and Shabraz says whenever you draw a card, gain a life. So the same sort of thing will happen. You'll go into this loop, and neither of those abilities are maze, so you will draw your entire deck right there, which means you'll either want to wait to break the loop, or once again, or have one of these cards in play so that you don't deck yourself. And for that reason, I like Drog Skull Reaver. I think it's a really cool card. It is very expensive at 7, but it does have really cool abilities. So if you're playing in maybe a slightly slower meta, uh, I could definitely see that being a thing. But if you're trying to go fast combo, I'd probably stay away from the Drog Skull. Anyway, getting back to the Curiosity combo, there's a few more things I want to talk about. The next piece in this puzzle is that we do need to get 8 cards in our hand. So you're going to want to look at some card draw, and there's many places to get card draw in blue. Uh, Mystic Remora, Aristic Study are going to be the most competitive options. Nezzle Hall is very cool, very powerful, as is Consecrated Sphinx. Recurring Insight can do some real work too. So there's a lot of powerful options in blue. Choose the ones that make the most sense for what you're trying to do and your budget. Another thing I want to mention too, if you have Curiosity on Brawlin and you don't have 8 cards in your hand, one thing that you can do is you can play some looting effects like Careful Study or Faithless Looting, and what'll happen is you'll draw 2 cards, you'll discard 2 cards, that'll cause 2 damage triggers, and then you'll draw 2 more cards, so you've actually drawn 4 and discarded 2, and that may be enough to get you up to that 8 card threshold that you need to reach. But even if it doesn't, it's still just going to get some damage in on your opponents, it's going to be some good card draw, and it's just going to be value as your commander is getting bigger while all this is happening. So, there's a ton of looting effects available, I've highlighted some of them here, there's a bunch more in red that I didn't include, I'm sure there's a bunch more in blue. I did miss Cathartic Reunion on this page, uh, I believe there's a red one that's Instant Speed, I can't remember the name of that one. But many great looting effects, definitely going to want to run some number of those. And the cheaper the mana, the better. Uh, Frantic Search is really, really powerful because of the essentially free cost. And uh, Cavalier Flame is a cool little card if you are planning to do some amount of attacking with the deck. Uh, because you can give your stuff haste, it's got team fire breathing, and you can discard your entire hand and take an entirely new hand. And uh, it also has that dies trigger as well. So lots of cool stuff here, and you'll definitely want some of these. The next thing we'll talk about is, regardless of what kind of deck you want to build with these two, you probably want some number of wheels in the deck. Wheels are going to be your best way of triggering more card draw for Shabraz and more discarding for Brawlin. Here's a few great options for you. There's many more. Chandra Flamecaller is getting reprinted in the Commander product. I don't have it on this page, but is a great card. So lots of great options for wheels. There are many when you're in red and blue. One thing I will mention, though, is you won't get full value off of any of the wheels that shuffle things back into your deck. I'm not saying don't run them, I'm just saying be aware of them, because they won't trigger the damage ability from Brawlin, if that's something that you're really after. However, a lot of the shuffle wheels are just inherently powerful. Not shown here, but Time Twister and the, uh, the Modern Horizons version of Time Twister, both very powerful cards. If you lose your combo pieces and they're in the graveyard, that does give you a way to get them back in the deck, which is a really common thing. So again, it's not that you shouldn't run them, you just want to be very mindful about what you're doing with your deck if you are, and having a plan. Like, if you're building around the shark a little bit more, then it might make sense to have more of these. If you're really trying to get those damage triggers, then maybe it makes sense to not have any of these. Since we are talking about wheels and drawing a lot of cards, here's a few cards that are really good with wheels. We got Glinthorn Buccaneer, which is essentially going to give you another copy of your commander, if we are trying to do the curiosity thing and do the damage to all opponents thing. Uh, Psychosis Crawler, very similar. Doesn't work with Curiosity, though. Uh, and then we have the Locust God, which is just good. It's just going to make a ton of tokens and be awesome. And that one got reprinted as well, so the cost should be relatively affordable. And because we're talking about wheels, uh, we can also talk about some things that make life terrible for our opponents. If we're playing a wheel with one of these cards out, we've got Narset and Alms Collector. Narset says they'll draw one card, and Alms Collector says they'll draw one card. Pretty nasty, and uh, I've lost quite a few games to Narset plus Wheel, so if Narset plus Wheel is something you like to do, this deck gives you another home to do it in, on top of getting some benefits out of your commander in the process. So we've talked a lot about the Curiosity combo potential and some combo potential with Wheels. Let's take a look at some other things we can do with the deck. So because our commanders are going to get larger over time, 
it does enter into the equation that you could go Voltron with these things if you wanted to, and you don't even need to devote that many cards to do it. Like, you could just have two or three cards in the deck as a failsafe should your combo go awry. Something like a Luxodon Warhammer, Blackblade Reforged, Shadow Spear, all going to be really nice. Anything that's going to give it Double Strike, anything that's going to give it Lifelink, anything that's going to give it Trample, all going to be very good. Not shown here, but Embercleave, also a really powerful card, gives you the Double Strike and the Trample all at once. So yeah, the fact that your commanders are just going to be getting larger over time does make me really interested in their potential for aggro and beatdown. Even if you're trying to do the combo thing, having a two-pronged approach like that is very, very powerful. And if you're interested in the combat side of Brawlin and Shabraz, extra combat's also going to be really good. Here's a few good options, there are many more. But these are the ones that kind of come to the forefront for me most of the time. Another potential thing that you can do with Rollin and Shabraz is focus on the plus one plus one counters aspect of the deck. Here's a few cards that do good things when your commander has a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, I really like the flying from Abzan Falconer. Uh, the lifelink from the Battle Priest is going to be pretty good. Send Tactician being able to block extra creatures, especially if your commanders are larger than everything else in play. Uh, that extra blocking could be very powerful. Together Forever gives you a bit of a uh, protection mechanic for your commanders, which I think could be very good. It will reset the counters when they leave play and come back, but that's still way better than having to recast your commanders and pay full price. You know, if they get blown up a time or two, that can get really pricey. So protecting them going to be a pretty big deal. Together Forever, a pretty decent option. And then we've got some blue plus one plus one counters matters cards. We've got Toothy, which I think is going to be really good in this deck. Whenever you draw a card, it's going to get bigger. Then you draw a million more when it leaves the battlefield. Uh, Herald of Secret Streams, really good. Creatures with counters can't be blocked. This probably isn't going to be a proliferate deck for me personally, but I could see going like a Planeswalker's route and proliferating that way, making your commanders huge. Flux Channeler, just a solid card anyway. If you're going to be casting non-creature spells, uh, why not get a few extra counters on there? Chasm Skulker, also very good. Whenever you draw a card, put a counter on it. When it dies, make that many squid. And then Deep Glow Skate, probably not as needed in this deck in the same way that like a Planeswalker deck might want it, but double up the number of counters on a permanent. Why not? Another thing you can do if you're going the non-combo route, you could focus a little bit on life gain. I assume that more of the life gain stuff is going to fall into the combat realm of things, uh, with the exception of Aether Flux Reservoir and Felidar Sovereign. Crested Sunmare I think could be pretty good, because it only takes one life to make a token, so that's not a difficult thing to do. Dawn of Hope, solid, draw some extra cards. Uh, Sarah Ascendant, just good for attacking stuff, why not? It's also a human, so that's relevant. Heliod Suncrowned, make your things even bigger? Yeah, why not? Um, as far as Aetherflux Reservoir goes, I don't know specifically if this is going to be a great Aetherflux deck, but if you just happen to be over 50 life a lot, it is a very powerful card to have around to kind of use as like a player killing counter spell if someone's trying to mess with your board in a way that's going to set you back very badly. So maybe, maybe not on the Aetherflux. It's definitely a decision that you can make. And same thing with Felidar Sovereign, it's probably not the first place I'm going with the deck, but factoring in one or two good life gain cards, especially if you're going the combat route, I think will be a pretty solid idea for this deck. Now, there's one more mechanic that we haven't talked about that I think is also going to be very relevant to these commanders, and that's cycling. Now, my initial opinion is, if you want to do the full cycling thing, I don't think these are the right commanders for it. I think Gavi is going to be so incredibly powerful that if you want to do the cycling thing, that's your commander. Use that commander. Free cycling cost is going to be absurdly good. I think the value you're going to get from cycling with Shabraz and Brawlin is it's going to be incidental value. It's not going to be like blow you away amounts of power. So my general thought on cycling with these two is you want some number of cards that cycle but are also impactful on their own and you may actually want to cast throughout the game. So the cycling is kind of a backup option if you just need to draw a card and maybe trigger your commander an extra time or two. Uh, but I do think the one that'll be most powerful is Tectonic Reformation because it's a cycling cost of one which is good. It will stretch your mana base a little bit because it is red and we're in a three color deck so you'll need to be careful of that. But beyond that, being able to cycle lands away for one, I think is going to be super powerful, especially if we've already got Curiosity on Brawlin and we're just trying to get up to the eight cards that we need. I think Tectonic Reformation is going to be very, very solid and may also be a reason to up the land count in your deck a little bit instead of getting greedy with 36. Might make more sense to go to like 38 just because you should have a decent ability to cycle them away and the looting. And then we see a bunch of removal-based cards that all have cycling on them. Uh, again, these are all cards that you probably want to play anyway, or are at least powerful to compete with the other removal options available for those slots, but do have cycling on them. 
Like I said, I think you're going to want to avoid cards that have cycling just for the sake of cycling them. Uh, two cards that I'm not sure make the cut for this deck. We got Slice and Dice, Astral Drift. Six mana for four damage. It's kind of a lot. Astral Drift, I just don't know if we're going to be cycling enough to make it matter. Maybe one or two triggers is fine. I don't know. Might need a little bit of playtesting on these two, but they're definitely on the fence for me. But interesting enough that I wanted to mention them here. And then, of course, we have the Cycling Lands. Traditionally, I don't play the Cycling Lands very much. This is actually one of the few decks where I may actually run a number of them. For me, I'd rather just have a basic in that slot most of the time. A lot of the things I do revolve around the number of basics that I have in the deck. If you're talking about Ameria Shepherds and Cabal Coffers and things like that, uh, you really do want to try to maximize the number of basics. So historically, I haven't played a lot of these, but this will probably be the time that I do because I think they'll offer enough upside to being able to get some value out of the commanders while eating the downside of if you need to play that land, it's coming in tapped. Uh, obviously, I would say start with the one mana cyclers first. I may not go for the two mana cyclers with remote aisle. I don't know. That's just going to be a balancing act. You're going to have to figure that out. It's going to take a little bit of playtesting. Will probably depend on your own specific mana base and how many fetches, duels, and shocks you have. The more of those things that you have, the more cycling lands you can probably support. Where if you're using a lot of basics, you may not want your lands coming in tapped all the time. So uh, just be cognizant and there will be some give and take in that space. So just be aware of it. Another mechanic that uses discarding but is not cycling is the transmute mechanic. And I do think transmute is particularly interesting because it's essentially another tutor. In our case, Dizzy Spell and Drift of Phantasms can find Curiosity and Ophidian Eye, which gets us to our combo. Muddle the Mixture is a very reasonable counter spell and does find you another card at two mana, which is just relevant a lot of the time. And then I included it here just because it has Transmute. Talaria West, you probably don't need it for this deck exactly, but wanted to include it while talking about the Transmute card. So I think Transmute going to be a pretty solid mechanic for these commanders as well. So anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up on Brawlin and Shabraz. That's kind of what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing the Curiosity combo. I'm seeing a lot of wheels. If you wanted to do a little bit of attacking, I think you're going to be in some pretty good space to do it. I do like the fact that they're going to get bigger over time. And also considering that they're going to get bigger over time with that incidental damage effect. So maybe you don't need to commander damage everyone out of the game, but if they're just at low life and you can just swing in to finish them, why not? Talked about some plus one, plus one counters. I don't think the counters will be like a main theme of the deck, but just having a couple cards in there that give you some nice abilities. Unblockable, lifelink, flying, stuff like that, all pretty good. Uh, same sort of thing with the life gain. I don't think it's going to be a main focus of the deck, but having a few good life gain cards in the deck, also going to do some nice things with these commanders. I think Heliod's going to be very good. I think Crested Sunmare can also be very good if you want to go the combat route. And then, yeah, I think you're going to want some number of looting effects, some number of cycling effects, maybe a little bit of transmute, things that'll get a little bit of extra value onto your commanders. And uh, yeah, I really like these two. There's a lot of different angles of attack. You can go combo, you can go combat, you can do kind of a mixture of both. So really looks like there's a lot of space to explore with these two. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here before I get too long. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. And be sure to use the TCG Affiliate Player link as it helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything.